Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most amount of turn skips, <laughs> Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button. It's looking mighty clean with 1,038 subscribers as we climb even, bleh, as we climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I kind of fudged it there at the end, but that's okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're having a fantastic day. Happy December 1st. If you celebrate Christmas, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, uh, go get your mama a gift, Kwanzaa. I, I don't know. I'm trying to make a joke and I'm failing terribly. <laughs> this, though, is not a joke. This ain't no Christmas uh, joy, at least for the opponent, because we're skipping their turn. <laughs> So this actually came in, I think, like top eight out of the OCG. Now, before you start freaking out, Avery, this is OCG, it's irrelevant. No, it is not. Uh, this uses the new Makonko cards that I think we're getting in Amazing Defenders. We're either getting them in Amazing Defenders or possibly Photon Hypernova. Don't quote me on that. We are getting it in a future set. And this is what I just call, as you can see by the title here, Phase Skip LOL. Um, so this is, it's literally a phase skip deck. So we use a card called Terminal World. Very interesting card that was released some time ago. It's a continuous spell that literally just shows a picture of the dual terminal. And it says only activate during main phase one. So during either player's main phase one, if you can somehow play a continuous spell during the opponent's turn. While this card is on the field, both players skip their main phase two. Now you're probably thinking, well, Avery, that's kind of pointless. My opponent just has to set their backer before they go to battle phase and then they skip their main phase two and go to end phase that you 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 would be right now go ahead and then uh look at burning bamboo sword <laughs> it's a continuous spell that says if you activate a bamboo sword card while this card's already face up in your spell and trap zone you can skip your opponent's next main phase one so the way it's worded is just like a runic spell meaning if you activate multiple bamboo sword equip spells then this bitch will stack <laughs> so you activate five equip spells the opponent's skipping their next five main phase ones so when you combine this with terminal world which uh, spoiler alert, it's consistent as fuck in this deck. <laughs> um, you skip the opponent's whole turn. They go to draw phase, standby phase. In both those phases, they have a chance to activate any sort of quick play spells. Like if they're playing Sprite, they can play Starter or whatever. But then they lose their main phase. And I believe, I could be wrong on this. Someone will need to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. You skip your main phase. And because your main phase got skipped, I believe by game mechanics, you cannot go to your battle phase. Therefore, since you can't go to your battle phase, you can't go to your main phase too. Well, your main phase two is skipped anyway. Therefore, you go to your end phase. Ha <laughs> ha! No turn for you, Sugar Boo Bear. So then we just get the game back to our turn and we win. This deck is very combo heavy. I've done several test hands with it. You've got to go first with this deck because I don't see how the hell you're going second. Um, obviously, with the OCG balance, they do have two E Telly compared to us having three here. I really feel like you only need two, though, because literally your only target is fucking Geek Boy. You have no other psychics. Um, so take that for what you will. Um, and yeah, so it, it's it's going to be legal here in the TCG once we get the Makanko stuff, barring any balance changes. So let's just go ahead and dive into this deck here. So we're playing three copies of Diviner because you can dump either Ins if you're going second, which it's obviously very hard to go second just at a glance with this deck, or you can dump Arc Light to get a Ritual or a Ritual Spell. We're playing one copy of Hair the Sword Makanko. So if this card is not equipped with any equipped card, you take no battle damage from battles involving it. If it is, it can't be destroyed by battle. Cool. Also, your opponent takes any battle damage you would have taken from battles involving it instead. Zero attack, whatever. If this card becomes equipped with an equipped card, you can add one Makanko equip spell from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect once per turn. So you can search for either a Blazing Dance or uh, you can search for the, where is it, the other one? Ah, the, the Aberesk of the Makanko. Aberesk is really good because it lets you summon a Makanko from your hand or deck. We'll be getting into that in a minute. We're playing one Immortal Phoenix Gearfried, one for Noble Knight Renaud, one Oliver, one Libromancer Agent, one Libromancer Fire, one Geek Boy, one Souls, two Illusion and Chaos to get to the Souls, one Doombreaker, really dope-ass art, and then three uh, Makanko of the Uheim. This card is disgusting. Uh, and then we're playing one Infernoble Arms to Randall, one Aberisk, one Blazing Dance, one Blazing Bamboo Sword, three copies of Curse, which is not once per turn to uh, search. Anytime it goes to Grave, you add a Bamboo Sword from deck of hand. It's disgusting. Two e Telly to get to our one fucking target. The OCG is wild. Three Golden Bamboo, one First Appearance. It's basically a light stage. You just add a Libromancer from deck of hand, and that lets you Ritual Summon. Uh, one Kagura. It's a Ritual Spell. It's... It's basically just to get you to Uheim for extension plays. 
Three original bamboo swords. So the equipped monster gains zero attack, because of course it does. When the equipped monster inflicts battle damage by a direct attack, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls. You can send this equipped card to the graveyard. Equip one bamboo sword equip spell from your deck to one face-up monster on the field, except original bamboo sword. Now, keep in mind, the way that burning bamboo is worded, you have to actually activate the equip spell. So you can't send original to equip curse and then get the effect of burning. You have to actually activate it. Then we have uh, three prep. Two Terminal World, one Great Makonko of Legend, one Talents, one Libermancer Intervention, and then one Makonko Catfight. So Legend's really cool because it lets you special summon any Makonko from your hand, ignoring its summoning conditions. That means that you can go for Uheim. It ignores the summoning conditions, so you don't have to ritual summon it. Um, and then you return to the hand during your opponent's end phase. We don't care. During your main phase, you can banish this card from your grave, send one Makonko card from your deck to the grave, except Legend. You can only use each effect once a turn. So the play is that you go Legend to summon Uheim, banish it to dump uh, Aberesk, then use Uheim's effect since it's on the field to target an equip spell in your grave and equip it to Uheim. So use Aberesk, equip to Uheim, use the Aberesk to special summon a Makanko from deck. So you go for the hair, and then Aberisk equips to hair, and then hair gains an effect to add a Makanko equip spell. So you can get the Blazing Dance in your head. Just more deck thinning. For the side deck, we're playing three Lava Golem, one more Aberus, two Eclipse, one more uh, E-Telly. Uh, I actually threw this in the side. It's actually something else because the side deck's just kind of irrelevant. It's in the OCG, but, you know, have have an, an extra slot for whatever you want. One Feather Duster, three Hidden Armory, one Mind Control, one Tasking, one more Talent, and D-Barrier. Extra deck, we're playing one Ints, one Baron, one Arclight, one Coral Dragon, one Power Tool Braver Dragon, one Tzilkin, one Apollosa, one Boral Sword, one Ferocious Flame, one IP, one Ice Sold, one Nightmare, one Anima, one Skull Dread, and then one Sprite Elf. So how does this deck function? Well, I'm not going to show you the combos because it really is long and convoluted. You're looking at one, two, three, four, five. So this hand, I think at a glance, gets you there. I'll still admit I'm, I'm learning the deck. But like you would set intervention because it's basically an infernity barrier, but not on a counter trap. I've actually never opened up Immortal Phoenix, so I mean it's cool. It's basically just an extender. Your main go-to really is like using Illusion of Chaos or using Illusion of Chaos to get to the souls, and then using souls to dump an Illusion of Chaos from deck to summon this. Um, normally you'll use Legend to go for Uheim. I feel like that this hand is mostly a bit of a brick because like you can banish an equip spell from field or grave to summon the Immortal Phoenix. But it's not really going to do you anything else because you also don't have access to an equip spell. I feel like this is just more of a brick. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So this is already disgusting because you opened up Terminal World. So you can just activate that. And then Original Bamboo Sword can get you any Bamboo Sword equipped, which is really good. Opening up Fire with a Ritual is disgusting because you can just reveal a Ritual to summon it. Uh, and then since this is fire, you can add, uh, you can use fire's effect to add a Libromancer monster. So that gets you to Geek Boy. Use Geek Boy's effect to reveal Doombreaker to uh, summon again. So now you've got two monsters, which can get you to Ferocious Flame Swordsman. And then all you need is one more warrior to get yourself to Ice Sold, which just going for Ice Sold should be enough to get you to the uh, Burning Bamboo Sword because you can dump Curse Bamboo to get out Renaud. Renaud gets you Curse Bamboo from Grave to Hand. And then uh, the Curse Bamboo is going to search you the Burning Bamboo. So yeah, just off of that play you've already got game because you already opened up terminal world so that is just sort of a quick crash course on how the deck functions i highly encourage you to net deck this and try it out for yourself because the way that this works is just insane being able to skip the main phase one and two and basically just tell the opponent to go f themselves and just not have a turn is insane so man i've been having fun with this it's going to be toxic if this ends up adapting on over here to the tcg is it very good going first absolutely is it absolutely bad going second it is absolutely dog shit going second there's no going second playing this deck you're going up against a shizu tier they're going to spank your ass out the venue like real talk like there's nothing you can do against this going second like, you just got to hope to God that your opponent bricks. Now, do keep in mind that a Shizu tier has had a few different hits on the OCG ban list. So, you know, they're adapting as needed. But for a core concept, this is still very interesting. So, guys, with all that being said, please let me know down in the comments what you think about this. Are you going to try it? Do you think it's degenerate? Is it inconsistent? Not really. Like, honestly, if you go first and the opponent, like, has no hand traps and, like, this can play through fucking Nibiru because you can usually make a Baron before summon number five if you open up Diviner. So I wouldn't really say that Nib is the issue. I would say that probably more hand traps would be the issue against this deck. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.